So, okay. So why glass? Why we are talking about glass today? And here you can see what we use. We use panels, we need, use sheets of very thin glass, and we have inscribed to warm up a little bit all the nice properties, but I will show it in a better way. And at first, yes, we have a very locust commercial material and we use display material. We can use that on panel and on wafer level. It is uh, steady under development and it is a very low fragile material with a high stability in dimension. That is very nice for some um, applications in photonic and electronic assembly. But additionally, we have very nice optical properties. One, of course, the optical transparency in comparison to polymers. We have a high transmission uh, or a broad wavelength range up to the communication wavelengths, as you can see here, the 1310 and the 1550. On the other hand, we have perfect electrical properties for DC and uh, RF, and we can structure the material and I will show you later a little bit on these technologies uh, with wires to do uh, the interconnect through the substrate. But we have also very high chemical resistance so we can use it for uh, sensors, we can use it in um, harsh environments and it is a biocompatible material. In the next slide, there are some numbers, of course, explaining the mechanical, electrical properties, the optical properties, and we use the example D263 tickle from shot. This is a thin glass with convinces by superior glass properties, and we benefit from the uh, very good dielectric properties. You can see that uh, here, the frequency uh, dependent losses are quite nice, as you can see here, 1, 2, 5, 24, and 77 gigahertz. And we have the dielectric constant, as you can see here, uh, very low loss. And on the right hand side, again, the transmission curve for the wavelengths is starting here with the UV and blue and then up to the uh, telecommunication wavelengths in the near infrared. The thermal properties, of course, are something special. They are not as good as some ceramics. We have a quite low thermal conductivity. We can uh, overcome problems in packaging by that. Uh, or from that with special thermal management by design. We apply heat spreaders, we apply uh, thermal wires, but sometimes it is an advantage to have this low thermal conductance because we can separate different um, uh, areas on the substrate and that is of advantage for some applications in the higher um, power domain. We here at Fraunhofer, we have a long history on glass and we started with that what we call electro-optical circuit boards. That was uh, at first uh, targeted to the optical backplanes and we tried to use glass for the optical layer for high bandwidth optical waveguides to um, have an uh, another choice than all the guys tried with polymer optical waveguides. Because in the polymer optical waveguide domain, people suffered from reliability issues and low loss or higher losses in the uh, near infrared range. So we started with glass, with the upcoming um, display glass more than 20 years ago. We use a special technology. I will explain that a little bit later. That is the ion exchange. But today we also started with femtosecond laser waveguide integration into that substrate glasses. 
And today we are happy to see that in September 2023, Intel has been announced less for electronic substrate to enable upcoming uh, high performance computing, including photonics. Maybe you are aware of these uh, press releases. Uh, Intel, your industry leading glass substrate to meet demand for more powerful compute. There was a video and they argued uh, a lot why glass is the future material for ship packaging on interposes on panel uh, with very small line space, as you can see here, uh, to reach higher complexity. And so we are quite proud that we already started earlier and we have a lot of solutions already on the table to um, uh, enable this electronic and photonic system integration by using glass. Our motivations before are coming from sensing and communication applications. Here on that um, slide, you can see some data from the data center uh, domain. And in the moment, everybody is talking about co-packaging. Co-packaging means uh, close assembly of electrical optical components, transceivers, uh, very close to the switch ASIC, for instance. And what we propose is putting that on a glass interposer, a large one that could be centimeters by centimeters, and integrate not only the electronics, the high frequency electronics, as you can see here in yellow, uh, but also the optical interconnects to have a cost effective routing to interconnect that with fiber connectors here, maybe only on one end. Uh, and that is the driver from the um, uh, communication application. Another new module concept becomes possible. What we call photonic system and package, PZIP, using glass allows both high design complexity and miniaturization. On the left-hand side, you can see a quite large, fully glass module with uh, optical fibers in uh, and out, with a lot of components, micro lenses, all that what you can explain by means of a, a micro optical bench concept, for instance, that is in the centimeter range. We have a lot of projects re uh, realizing that and benefiting from the electrical, optical and mechanical properties of the glass. But more and more, we develop packages to overcome the well-known butterfly packages, for instance, and put the same functionality as you have today in a um, metal butterfly package in very small electronic-like optical module. That is a seat laser module with uh, uh, laser diode and some optics. I will explain that a little bit more in the next slides. And what we gain is a higher degree of miniaturization and so in the end, we can realize very compact systems. That is a seat laser, as I told you. It is part of a, a MOPA system, as you will see later. And that's the motivation. And uh, the next is how it looks like. On the right hand side, you can see such a glass panel and the processes we put uh, or we, we, we have to structure that are as follows. We have, of course, the cutting, we have the waveguide integration, structuring for through glass wires, for cavities, for the components. We have uh, physical, physical vapor deposition by sputtering, lithography, plating, then assembly, assembly of several components, laser diodes, photodiodes, ICs, fibers, and hermetic sealing. And these processes, I want to start to explain in a little bit, bit more detail in the next slides. Let us start with the optical 
waveguides which we integrate in that syn glass. An overview how to realize waveguides you can see here. Optical waveguides in glass are realized by four technologies today. It is femtosecond laser writing, UV writing, ion implantation, and ion exchange. We uh, have two processes here in our institute. At first, I want to explain the ion exchange and then the femtosecond laser writing. Uh, you can see here with the color code uh, that the ion exchange is a, a process with a very good process stability. It is able to be batch processed and uh, have very low cost and very low propagation losses. They uh, not all of the glasses can be used because it is a diffusion process. You have to exchange the right um, ions. And of course, it is a planar process so that uh, 3D processing is not really possible. That is possible, on the other hand, with femtosecond laser writing. And we are quite open for the glasses so that we have uh, on our roadmap to combine that together, maybe the femtosecond laser writing, which is a sequential, of course, laser writing process, uh, maybe more for the interfaces, more for the short lines, more for the special cases where we need 3D and for the um, uh, high volume processing where we uh, have two dimensions only, uh, we use that as a core technology we have developed for more than 20 years. How it looks like, we start with the glass, uh, display glass of 500, 700, whatever, uh, uh, depending on the application micrometers thickness. And then we sputter a metal layer on top, as you can see here in gray. Then we have a dip coating step and then a laser direct imaging to pattern the waveguides or the splitters, whatever. And in the end, after that, we put that in a, a Morton salt, having silver ions. Uh, the silver is uh, uh, painted red here. And these silver ions diffuse into the glass matrix. Uh, uh, they will be exchanged by sodium ions and a uh, course an increase of the refractive index. And so uh, after removal of the mask, you have nice um, waveguides here with the maximum of the refractive index on the surface. That is a good approach for some sensing applications. And if you want for data communications, if you want to bury the waveguide, then you have uh, to put that in an, another um, uh, molten salt. And so you can rediffuse a lot of the silver and uh, uh, gain a residual, very nice graded index waveguide buried uh, uh, beneath of the um, surface of the glass. And then, of course, uh, laser cutting to have the right uh, shape or length or, or whatever uh, of the uh, substrate. On the right hand side, some properties. Uh, we are uh, proud, as you know, of the uh, large optical bandwidth and in particular, the very low losses, 0 0.05 or 6 dB per centimeter at the 1550. That is not reachable with polymers, and uh, we have a very high reliability on that. If you have the waveguide in the glass, then they are stable. No problem with soldering processes, no problem with aging, and uh, so you can trust on these waveguides. There's a low uh, polarization uh, dependence and temperature dependence, as uh, said. And here you can see some um, mechanical figures. The thickness uh, down to 300 microns is possible in our lab, um, generally 500 or 700. Uh, and the format is 440 by 305 uh, 
uh, millimeter per square in the moment. So that's quite large. And uh, the mode field, so the optical mode field of the integrated waveguides can be adjusted to optical fiber. That is important, of course. And uh, later on, I want to explain how we do that. The ion exchange waveguide technology can be subdivided into thermal ion exchange and electrical field assisted processing. The thermal ion exchange I've already explained in the last slide, but we can also put an electrical field on the substrate and drive by that electrical field the ions to a deeper uh, position. We can reach a higher um, a difference in the refractive index, and so we gain uh, 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 more freedom for the structures. Uh, later on, you will see that that uh, is important for other components than only um, wife guides. The manufacturing process works on both wafer and panel level. Uh, that is easy to understand uh, what uh, what, what is possible on panel level on pr using printed circuit board uh, technologies, of course, should be possible on wafer level as well. We are proud that we are able to pattern and to structure and to realize these waveguides uh, on the higher uh, uh, or larger panel level, so we have cost benefits. As I said, optical building blocks uh, they, they are mere, more and they provide uh, more than point-to-point -point waveguides. On the left-hand side, you can see what is possible uh, in the passive domain. Of course, tapers to modify the, um, the, the, the optical mode, but also bands, crossings, multi-mode uh, interference, interference couplers, uh, ring filters, ring resonators, other kinds of couplers, isolators, or uh, uh, arid waveguide gratings. That's on the far road map in glass with that technology. But a lot of these uh, components we have already realized. And uh, for the optical interconnects, the a very nice thing later on you will see uh, uh, a little bit uh, more detailed slide on that is a coupling scheme uh, for the out of plane coupling. We call that graded index index surface coupling. So coming out with the light uh, to the top of the surface and then it can be connectorized or uh, coupled by an, uh, the same structure coming from the top. There is also the possibility to realize even a scent coupling to uh, drive the waveguide uh, to the surface, edge coupling, of course, and uh, the uh, uh, coupling to uh, diffraction gratings. On the right side, again, some um, uh, properties. Uh, the S bands, as you can see here in the moment, uh, about two, 20 uh, millimeter. Uh, after that, there are additional losses, but there are also um, uh, possibilities by design to reduce that. And here you can see the fiber optical uh, coupling losses. The completion of the process, Shane at Fraunhofer ISSM is a final inspection, and that is always a problem for new technology. You need equipment to test it, to convince the customers that the quality and the yield is really good enough. Here on this uh, big uh, photograph, you can see a very large uh, waveguide spiral, more than two meters. Uh, and that was a good example and nice to show uh, for a high um, homogeneity of the processing over such a large um, panel and to show that there's really uh, this low loss, the uh, value of 0 0.06 or 5 uh, dB per centimeter uh, uh, on a large panel. 
So the the equipment is described here. We have uh, the different stations to 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 measure the loss, the mode field, the cutoff, the refractive index, the coupling losses, uh, and we can do that automatically. And that is the uh, big advantage here. It's not a lab. Uh, process where you have to uh, ask students for hours to um, to measure that. That is an automated uh, inspection equipment. Okay, let's uh, turn to the next part. That is the laser processing of the glass. Of course, uh, we learned a lot from the uh, LCD um, technology. Uh, and so we use carbon dioxide lasers to to cut the the large panel to 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 have uh, as a result of this kind of processing uh, very smart interfaces, very smart edges, uh, no glass particles, and the uh, for for photonic packaging it is important that it is. Uh, uh, optical crack-free glass edge quality, so uh, we don't need any grinding or polishing. We have in the end the um, optical quality directly from the laser processing, and that is important for a packaging approach I want to explain later on. For cavities uh, which are not straight or have shapes, uh, uh, curved shapes and something like that. We use a green uh, wavelength laser with a uh, nice accuracy. Both processes, the carbon dioxide and the green laser are in the same machine. And more and more, we use the femtosecond laser process uh, with um, sodium uh, of, uh, uh, um, Hydroxide etching to uh, structure the glass in the so-called uh, selective laser-induced etching process to to have real three-dimensional uh, glass structure. That is the machine we do the uh, letter process. The femto uh, uh, second laser machine, uh, but we do not only the uh, selective laser induced etching as mentioned uh, in the morning uh, in, uh, in, the, in, in the last slide we use that machine also for the glass welding direct glass welding uh, is possible by femtosecond lasers and we use that machine from lightfab for the uh, 3D waveguide writing, that is the femtosecond laser writing, as I explained in my first, uh, or one of my first slides. That is a good working horse uh, in our group in the moment and uh, completes like that the uh, process chain of our uh, glass processing uh, beside the lithography and the um, ion exchange and other processes. Next is the fine structuring of the glass. And uh, so we use, or we, we, what we need is uh, uh, through glass wires, and we need. Um, uh, yeah, the uh, holes, cavities for uh, for for die placing, and for that we use the same machine, uh, the the the, the femtosecond uh, laser machine from Lightfab, and this selective laser etching process uh, for the TGV, the through glass wires. In the moment, the wire diameter is about fifty. Uh, microns, uh, small as possible, but of course you have to uh, fill that with with a good galvanic process. Uh, and uh, that is a basic technology we need to establish, or establish and, and, and enable the glass for the electrical optical substrates, of course. We use also here uh, the D 263, uh, as I mentioned, for the 
optical waveguides, but here also other glasses are uh, possible to use. Uh, that is important to mention maybe on that point, uh, there are different glasses uh, on the market. Some works for different processes and of course uh, the selection of the right glass is the first step for uh, a design of packaging um, if customer ask for uh, certain uh, functionalities. Metallization of the glass is the next point of my talk. And uh, we use for all the metallizations um, commercial equipment, what you can find on the market. And uh, so we have the already mentioned CO2 laser cutting, sputtering, dip coating for these large uh, panels, and then laser direct imaging, because uh, a large mask would be too expensive. You end up with a metallized uh, surface, and then, of course, after the structuring, you have um, uh, line spaces. In the moment, uh, we have five microns, and uh, below, we do that uh, on wafer level here for, for, for that. And then for the surface finishing, uh, in equal dig processes for the copper. I need to speed up uh, a little bit. Here in the next, you can see the metallization of the glass uh, for higher currents, thermal management uh, can be different, different uh, metals, different patterns, uh, all is possible. And you can see here other applications that was the LIDAR system, system on the right and on the left, an amplifier. So. Uh, to give you an idea uh, of the bright, uh, broad range. Last part is precision assembly of electrical micro-optical components. And uh, for that, because we have a lot of uh, photonic assembly uh, demands, we use special bonding equipment. So here on the right-hand side, you can see FICONTECH stages. We have several of that for optical active alignment, uh, and that are industrial pick and place machines. They have a very high accuracy, uh, as you can see here, accuracy uh, below 200 nanometers in the uh, XYZ stages and two arc seconds around three rotational uh, axes. So we use that for the uh, assembly of uh, optoelectronic, electronic, but also micro-optic components. Also fibers uh, can be uh, assembled using that kind of machines. Last uh, slides um, touch a little bit the other interconnects. So of course, we need fiber to ship interconnects with high fiber counts and low cost. Uh, here you can see glass uh, substrates with waveguides in for a special application uh, applied with um, fiber uh, arrays on the uh, MTP standard. That is one possibility. I have already mentioned the so-called uh, graded index uh, uh, surface coupling, that is the uh, GIS principle with um, ion exchange waveguides here in a special manner to couple out the light and into the waveguide, and then that can be fiber coupled. And we use that uh, for highly scalable packaging solutions using that glass. Here you can see uh, and uh, as I already told you, this idea to make or to, to avoid uh, butterfly packages, to bring that into smaller packages. And that can you see here on the right hand side, a little bit better in the next slide. Uh, it's uh, with an explosion uh, figure. That is the bottom layer. Here, the bottom layer with uh, all the metallizations I've uh, told you, uh, all the uh, etching for, and then the laser assembly through glass wires, 
the frame, the next, with an optical window, uh, without any grinding, that is an optical window made by this uh, carbon dioxide laser process. Fibers can be uh, fused on that, and then, of course, a capping with uh, the possibility of uh, hermetic sealing. And all these things are uh, assembled on panel level. That you can see a little bit better here. Uh, before capping, before, before the last uh, cap, these modules can be assembled on a large panel in a five contact machine, as I already told you. That is uh, here the moment where the lens is applied. On the right hand side, you can see this seat laser uh, as an example uh, of such a very small package realized by this glass. For the fiber, uh, coupling on this optical window, we use laser welding. That is an adhesive-free interconnect approach. Again, with a FICONTECH machine, with this high precision, but uh, using laser technique so that we don't need any adhesive gluing and have a high reliability, low loss. We can use that for the substrates, but also for, as you can see here, that is such kind of waveguide substrate with uh, fibers at the edge. But we can use that, of course, also for micro lens arrays. Uh, the hermetic ceiling uh, is um, maybe a little bit late to explain that in more detail to you. Uh, only this slide, we have different processes. We have the FEMTO, as already mentioned, the FEMTO uh, second laser-based direct glass welding. We have also bonding technologies where we use the waveguides or, uh, or similar, uh, similar technology where we use ion exchange to integrate uh, structures for the uh, welding process to, 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 to have the heat at the right position. And we use also glass metal, uh, glass bonding solutions, all with lasers. Uh, they have uh, pros and cons, as you can see here, and it depends on the design. So we use that on demand, uh, what is the best uh, approach. Let me skip these three uh, slides with more detail. The uh, end of my talk will show you a new offer, uh, and that is a generic packaging platform based on glass for customized quantum photonic integrated circuits. So, uh, and uh, quantum um, uh, photonic integrated circuit is in some uh, extent uh, similar to other picks, but the problem is that these picks sometimes are of uh, not really def good defined properties. And so at first we apply all of our characterization techniques to find or to, to measure, to characterize the mode fields of the silicon nitride or uh, silicon picks. And then we uh, offer a generic package, so that is that what you can see here, using all the technologies you have um, heard about in that talk, the laser welding, the selective laser etching, the ion exchange, the hermetic sealing, the metallizations, but the package itself is more generic. Uh, it is some big, uh, something bigger, maybe uh, for some customers, a test platform to start with the first pick to go to some redesign um, uh, uh, rounds. And then if this approach is successful, then we end up with a package with a more uh, specific, more miniaturized, more complex system for the customer. Uh, but that is uh, the first step and very, very um, uh, yeah, uh, convenient for the customers to have the results and the testability uh, in a very short time. 
that it a little bit late, but uh, as you can see here, we have a lot of experience with glass use to use it as a substrate and in the end and every day in glass, we trust. Thank you everybody for your attention.